local all morning. The Fox 61 Morning News starts now. And right now at 6 o'clock with the heat on for yet another day, we're talking about preventing hot car deaths. What you need to know if you see a child or even a pet that's left inside somebody else's car today. And emotional moments for Sandy Hook parents. One father's words in court for the case involving conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. Also, a Connecticut man shared with us his experience with monkeypox. We'll tell you how he said the virus has been impacting him for weeks now. Good morning. Thanks for joining us this Wednesday here on Fox 61. We're glad you're here. I'm Erica Arias. And I'm Tim Lambers. Good morning to you. Happy Wednesday, everybody. And of course, we're starting by talking about the heat here. As we look at the Connecticut River at the uh, front boathouse there, the riverfront boathouse in Hartford, the Bulkley Bridge, heading over to East Hartford. It's going to be the start of yet another hot day. Looks like some calm out there, but certainly hazy there. You can see it there in the sky. We're bringing in Rachel Piscatelli. Hey, Rach. Hey, good morning. So today we get a little bit of relief from the humidity, but still going to be a very hot and uh, warm day today with highs expected to make it back into the 90s. But if you're mm -hmm. heading to the beaches, going to be a gorgeous day to hit the beaches, 82 to about 86 degrees. A live look outside at the Hartford City camera. It's gorgeous this morning. Abundant of sunshine expected with temperatures right now in the 70s. Dew points in the 60s. We're at 65 degrees in Meriden, 71 in New Haven, 72 in Groton. You're looking at dew points in the 60s, which is nice. We were dealing with two points in the upper 60s yesterday at this time just to give you an idea so when you're stepping out the door you'll notice a bit of a difference in the air and some models are projecting maybe seeing dew points fall into the 50s well what does that mean for you well humidity stays low today under a good amount of sunshine then by the overnight hours that humidity continues to rise not ideal sleeping conditions and unfortunately tomorrow brings in another day for 90s upper 90s and also high humidity too so look Looking at Ocean Beach Park today, 83 degrees, 86 at Ham and Acid, high tide between 2 and about 4 o'clock or so. UV index is high, but again, a nice day to hit the beaches. Just make sure you stay hydrated. Find that shade. Also looking at a heat advisory in place for Thursday and Friday as temperatures soar into the upper 90s with heat index values that can make it feel like the triple digits. We'll talk much more about that and your scattered thunderstorm chances coming up in just a bit. But right now it is 6.02. We want to get a check out on the roadways. Lauren, good morning. Good morning to you, Rach. Good morning, everyone. 602 here in the CTDOT Traffic Center. Relatively quiet morning, just some construction that is cleaned up in the four and the five o'clock hours. But now at the top of the six, you could still see that there's quite a bit of construction out there, but no incidents to report. So that's some good news here on our Wednesday morning. Route 2, I-84, I-91, all looking good this morning. We do have some delays. New Britain Ave to the Hartford Tunnel coming into the capital city. But overall, Weathersfield, I-91 north and southbound moving just fine. Waterbury construction has cleaned up heading into the Mixmaster right there. And now let's move on to our Fairfield County drive times. We are starting to see some delay Bridgeport to Fairfield on the southbound side of I-95. As of right now, Route 15 is looking good for the time being. And as we take a live look out in Fairfield, you can see those delays starting to build that heavier volume out on the roads on the southbound side of I-95. And lastly, let's check in. Ooh, pretty shot right there in New London. Love that on I-95. We'll check back in coming up at 6 30 we'll have more information on the rails and also the skies at 6 30 guys okay thank you so much lauren well today a cheshire woman is expected in court to face an animal cruelty charge 37 year old susie rivers is accused of leaving her dog in a car to die in southington police said it happened back in june in the parking lot of the southington library police said the dog was alone in a car for a little over three hours based on surveillance video Rivers is expected in New Britain court later this morning. And with the extreme heat that we're all in for, it's a good reminder, not just for pet owners, but for those who may witness these animals in distress. Yeah, Lindsay Kane's live in Southington this morning. Lindsay, already heating up out there, so this is uh, obviously mm. quite timely to talk about. Hi, good morning. Yes, it is. And of course, today is expected to be another scorcher. So people are encouraged to stay out of the hot conditions. But the same goes for our furry friends and especially when it comes to hot cars. Now here in Sedlington, police have already responded to nine animal cruelty calls so far this summer and three arrests have already been made. And it's important to remember when it's hot outside, your car is even hotter and it can heat up very quickly. It only takes about 15 minutes if it's 95 degrees 
degrees outside for your car to reach 115 degrees and 30 minutes to reach 130 degrees. When it's even hotter than that outside, those temperatures just keep going up. The signs of heat distress in dogs are panting and drooling. Dogs can also lose consciousness if it gets too hot. And if you see a dog in distress or in an unattended hot car, there is a good Samaritan law here in Connecticut that protects someone legally if they have to break a window in order to save an animal. And the Good Samaritan law also protects people who have to break a window in order to save a child who was left in a hot car as well. And we'll have more on that coming up in the next hour. But for now, live in Southington, Lindsay Kane, Fact 61 News. And Lindsay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah, just keeping them out. It does not take long for things to get really, really bad. So uh, it's good to know that Important there is something too. you can do if you see that happening because time is of the essence. And don't hesitate. Yeah. All right, new this morning, we do know there are now four new confirmed cases of monkeypox in Connecticut, which brings the statewide total up to 39. Yeah, right now, the warning from one man in our state about his experiences with the condition. Fox 6 News' Tony Black spoke with the West Hartford man who has been in quarantine for three weeks now. I'm on day 20 of quarantine right now, and it's looking like it's going to be another week or two still. So. Johnny Rivera is diagnosed with monkeypox. The West Hartford man was notified by his partner he might have it. Not long after that, Rivera started to get symptoms himself. Uh, my partner came back positive and just by the way, symptoms were progressing and they progress rather rapidly. Uh, and having done my research, I knew that I had monkeypox. A majority of his symptoms began the first week with fever, exhaustion, aches, and swollen lymph nodes. Pimple-like sores started to appear on his body. The virus can last upwards of four weeks until a new layer of skin has formed and the scabs are gone. Rivera expects his healing to last a little longer. I tend to be kind of a tough cookie, mentally strong. I uh, was just preparing myself to hunker down. Connecticut opened 13 monkeypox vaccination sites Monday. Rivera feels like rollout could have come sooner. There's also specific criteria to be eligible for vaccination in the state. It's recommended for those who were exposed or had close contact and remain without symptoms. People who are at least 18, a resident, have had multiple partners in the last two weeks and are a man who has sex with other men are also eligible. Being so detailed, it kind of does a disservice to the community. Connecticut's supply is being prioritized prioritized for those at higher risk and Rivera recommends people get it. The CDC says the vaccine isn't expected to benefit those with symptoms. A majority of doses have gone to hard hit areas as multiple states declared a public health emergency. New York City has received 45,000 doses, Connecticut about 1,800. If you can get vaccinated, push for vaccine. Tony Black, Fox 61 News. Well, today, flags are flying at half staff for today and tomorrow in honor of U.S. Army Reserve Master Sergeant Michael Clark, who is from Bolton. He was killed by a lightning strike during a training exercise with the U.S. Army Reserve at Fort Gordon in Augusta, Georgia. Calling hours and a funeral are scheduled to be held today and tomorrow in Windsor. Well, the father of a little boy killed during the Sandy Hook school shooting says that he has endured years of pain and torture from conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. Neil Heslin is one of several parents seeking as much as $150 million from the InfoWars radio host, who repeatedly claimed that the 2012 tragedy was a hoax. Heslin says Jones has spent years harassing his family, and he's received death threats from Jones's followers. I can't even describe last nine and a half years of the living hell that I and others have had to endure because of the negligence and the recklessness of Alex Jones and his propaganda that he has peddled for his own profits and success. Al Jones has since acknowledged that the shooting was real and did happen. His lawyer claims that Jones had already paid for his lies since InfoWars has filed for bankruptcy, and he has been banned from many online platforms for violating hate speech policies. That I never intentionally tried to hurt you. I never even said your name until this case came to court. Uh, I didn't even really know who you were until a couple years ago when all this started up. The Internet had a lot of questions. Well, courts in Connecticut and Texas have already found Jones liable for defamation. For now, he pushed the conspiracy theory that the Sandy Hook shooting was a hoax. 
A state trooper is on administrative leave, accused of assault. Trooper Jamie Solis uh, appeared in Rockville Superior Court yesterday to face three charges, including risk of injury to a child. Vernon police said Solis hit the victim in front of a child. The victim suffered a head injury. The child wasn't hurt, though. Solis is due back in court later this month. 6:10 now. The man accused of killing his grandfather in Connecticut and his mother at sea has been ordered to remain in jail while awaiting trial after a federal judge said that Nathan Carmen was a flight risk. Now, Carmen's been jailed since his arrest in May on murder charges and fraud charges, and he was seeking to be released from his from custody until his trial. Now, in addition to the death of his mother, federal investigators say Carmen is also responsible for the unsolved murder of his grandfather. But he has not been charged with anything related to that case. Two of Carmen's aunts said last week that they feared retribution if Carmen is released. Well, it was a surprising discovery for a man in Middletown. He found three World War II era mortar shells. Police said the man found them while magnet fishing in the Mattabesset River yesterday morning. Uh, the U.S. Air Force Explosive Ordnance Disposal Team and a bomb squad from the state police both came to dispose of the mortars. Crews searched the surrounding area for other explosives, but none were found. Well, communities all over the state came together last night, marking the National Night Out. It was an evening of block parties and other fun events, but it's also meant to strengthen the connections between police and the communities that they serve. Fox 61 visited events in New Haven and Hartford. National Night Out is held every year on the first Tuesday of August.